Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be setting up an SMTP server on a local network. Now, SMTP server is just a mail server. Now we're doing our local network because rather than using Gmail or Microsoft Hotmail, all that kind of cool stuff, we want to keep our data a little bit private. A couple of reasons for that. One is they have enough of our information. Stop it. You don't need to know the personal communications of our computers. And second, security. So for example, in my case here, I have a NAS drive and this NAS drive sends out notifications. For example, if I have a hard drive failure, it sends out a notification. So you need an SMTP server to set up that notification. If I were to use Gmail, they'd know a lot about my NAS and all that kind of stuff. But secondly, potential hackers, if anyone hacked my Gmail, hopefully they won't, they don't hack me, they won't see my NAS drive. So there's less chance of my NAS getting hacked by an external party because I'm not exposing my IP addresses to external parties. So that's one little thing. So I'm having all my local computers talk to each other and I'm not going to be sending in emails externally. So that's one of the disadvantages of the way I'm doing it here. Here I'm just setting up on a local Windows computer on my network. So I won't really be able to send emails externally, but you can always configure it to do all that stuff in the future if you like, or set up on a server and then have the SSL, all that kind of nonsense, just so you can do that stuff. But for me, I'm just setting up locally. So let's just jump in onto Windows right here. I'm using a free app. This is called HMail Server. It's very, very easy. Okay, it's not very, very easy. You can get in a tongue twist, but it's easy to set up. So I'm just gonna download the latest version. Mine's 568. Would you like to set up? Yes, I accept your agreement. And you can have a firewall to make sure it's doing the right thing, but you hit next. I'm gonna set up the server administrative shift tools. Now you are asked if you wanna use an external database or an internal one. So they have a pre-existing one, Microsoft SQL Compact, or you can use MySQL, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna use a built-in one because it's just super easy to set up that way, but you can, if you've got an, an SQL database running on your system, you just have to point it out to that IP address, which will be your local host and the right port, and you should be able to set up. But again, use built-in, it's the easiest way to do it. This is just setting up a start menu. And now you give yourself a password. I'm just going to go ahead and start installing it and initialize the database for it. Now, as you can see, it's made a call to a random website, probably the developers to let them know that someone's installed the client. I'm not going to allow that call because I'm using, I'm actually using a firewall here, bonus tip, using a firewall, it's for free, it's called Simple Wall, and it monitors all of my internet calls. So even though I'm on a virtual machine, on a Mac and all that stuff, I don't necessarily want to send all these calls randomly. Why do people need to know this stuff? So run HTML server. Finish and connect to localhost, connect. It's asking me for the password that we entered in earlier. We are now inside. I'm just gonna go into domains and you need to create a domain for your mail server. Now this doesn't have to be a real website. This is just what you're gonna call the domain because it's always gonna to point to the server and the server is gonna be specifying that domain. So I'm gonna just specify and it has to be formatted like a real domain. Like if you try using instead of .com, you can try making dot whatever you wanna do won't work. So you have to use like a .com and all that stuff, even though it won't be a real domain. So I've set that guy up, save. Now accounts, I'm going to add in a user account. I'm calling him Q because that's my QNet. And you can give him a password, set the size, administration level. As soon as you set that up, you are now ready to configure your mail clients. So while we're here, that your server's now running. That's it. That's all you need to do. And just say you want to set it up on your NAS, I'm going to go into Notification Center. You go into Service Account and Device Pairing, add SMTP service, you choose Gmail, probably the easiest, but like I said, we don't want to do that. Hit Custom, you got to give it the address, the email address, username, which is the same as the email address in this case, and the password. Now, one thing to note is that make sure you use the port number 25 because we haven't set up. SSL and all that kind of stuff. We just keep it nice easy. We're just keeping it nice and easy just to get it all set up. Once it's confirmed, you go into system notification rules and create a rule. And the rule is pretty much going to be we want everything right now. We can set up a mail client to filter out these notifications. So what you probably want to do next is, is set up an email client to connect to that server. So I'm going to go on my Mac here. So I'm showing you both Windows and Mac. I'm on my Mac back here and you just go into accounts and click on that plus button right there. You can see, choose other mail account. So I'm going to give it a name, blah. Now the email address I want to give it is the same email address I registered my user on my local SMTP server. So I'm going to give it that one. So next you need to give it the incoming outgoing server. So for me, it's just going to be my IP address. It's just giving me a warning here that I don't have SSL enabled on my server. 
I'm just doing it locally, a little bit of fun. So I hit continue. Now, of course, if you do set up SSL, it's a lot more secure because even though this is local, if you get a computer to tap into the network, they'll be able to fish out the password because it's sent unencrypted. So we'll do that in a future video, setting up SSL, maybe Google it. But for now, we're just gonna set this bad boy up. So he's going ahead and connecting. And that's it. We are now up and running and I'm getting all of my security notifications from my NAS. And if you go into preferences and just set up a bunch of rules so you can automatically delete any notifications you don't need and file them accordingly. So that's it, super easy. You can get your NAS, talk to your mail server and your client connecting up and you should be happy. Downsize is you need to be connected to your local network to read these messages and send these messages to each other. But like I said, a little bit more privacy a little bit more potential security, although you need to set up the SSL. But hope this video has kind of got you on the right path to set up this application. Super easy, just download it, run it, set it up. And of course, remember, you need to keep your Windows computer running because if the Windows computer isn't running, someone's gonna send an email. Your NAS is gonna try sending that email and what's gonna happen? No one's gonna be there. So you're gonna lose that message. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.